In this video, we're going to talk about asymptotes, and most of the time these questions show up as being categorized as functions on the ACT. When we're talking about an asymptote, this is a line that a curve approaches as it heads towards infinity. Most of the time we say it approaches, it never touches, but there are always those special cases, and sometimes lines do cross an asymptote. Most of the things that you're going to see on the ACT probably will not, though. We have three types of asymptotes. First of all, we have a horizontal. And notice on, in this graph how both of these curves can approach from either side of the asymptote, the horizontal. Then we also have a vertical asymptote. And again, you can have a, the curve approaching from either side of the vertical asymptote. And then our third case is an oblique or a slant asymptote. And those look a little bit different, um, and we're going to go into detail about each one of these here now. So when we're looking at a vertical asymptote, we are given usually a problem like this example here where we have a rational function, we have something with a denominator, and to find the vertical asymptote, we want to set the denominator equal to zero. If you remember when you're working with any kind of fractions, in any kind of rational expressions, we cannot have zero in the denominator. That is an undefined function or undefined expression. So the vertical asymptote is going to come into play here when the denominator is equal to zero. That's what we can't have in our graph. So when we set this denominator equal to zero, that's the x plus two, we solve for x and we get that x equals negative two. That is our vertical asymptote. If we graph it here, if you'll notice the red dashed line at x equals negative two, that is our vertical asymptote. And the graph approaches that but does not touch it. Now let's take a look at a horizontal asymptote. We're still looking at a rational expression. Here we have the x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 3. What we're looking at for a horizontal asymptote, we're looking at the highest exponent on our variables. If the power of x is larger in the denominator, which it is in this case, we have x squared on the bottom and just x to the first, in the numerator. If the power is larger in the denominator, we automatically say we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. We could have more than one asymptote with an expression, and we have that here. We have to go back to that vertical asymptote when the denominator is equal to zero. So we'll set x squared minus three equal to zero, solve for x, and we get x is equal to plus or minus square root of three. Looking at our horizontal asymptote, with the x squared, the largest exponent in the denominator, we're automatically going to say we have the horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And we can graph that out. You can see how the curves in blue approach. But if you'll also notice that middle section, this is one of our special cases where we talked about there are some times when a graph will cross over an asymptote and it does happen in this graph with the middle section. Again, you're not more than likely not going to have to deal with that. We're mainly looking at where are, are our asymptotes. So this is the horizontal asymptote when you have the largest exponent in the denominator. So we have another case for a horizontal asymptote, and this is when the powers are the same in the numerator and the denominator. And in that case, our horizontal asymptote of y equals is going to be equal to the coefficients of those highest powered variables. Let's take a look. So if we have this example of 2x squared minus 5 divided by 3x squared minus 1, if we're looking at the horizontal asymptotes, we see that the highest exponents are the same, the x squared, in both the numerator and the denominator. So what we can do now is just look at the coefficients on those two terms, the 2 over the 3, and that's what's going to give us the horizontal asymptote. So we have, again, the vertical asymptote is setting the denominator equal to 0, and we solve for x, 
And then that horizontal asymptote, we take on the co coefficients of the x squared terms, giving us y equals 2 thirds. And we can take a look at that and see in the red dashed lines, we have our two vertical asymptotes because we have the plus or minus, we had to take the square root. And then we have the one horizontal at y equals 2 thirds. So we've talked about our vertical asymptotes, our horizontal, and now the third case is the oblique or the slant asymptotes. In this case, the power of x is larger in the numerator, and you're going to have to use long division or synthetic division to find that slant asymptote. So when you do the long division, the whole number portion of the division, not the remainder, but the whole number portion, is the oblique asymptote. Now we don't have a lot of cases that we've seen you having to actually calculate what the slant asymptote is on the ACT, but mainly you have to be aware of what asymptotes there are given an equation. If you were given the equation x squared plus 2 divided by x minus 3, you would want to be able to look at this and note Number one, you have a vertical asymptote because we have a denominator. We would set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Then we look at our exponents on our variables. We have a larger exponent in the numerator. That means we're going to have a slant or an oblique asymptote. If they asked you to solve for this, you would have to do long division to find that oblique. But mainly it's just having an awareness that this equation has an oblique asymptote. So let's take a look at this ACT type example. Pause the video and work it, and then we'll come back and work it together. The question asks, what type of asymptotes, if any, does the function h of x equal to x squared minus 5 divided by 3x plus 2 have? So again, we want to make some observations. We have a denominator. So we're going to set the denominator equal to zero, and that will give us a vertical asymptote. You don't necessarily have to solve for it in this particular case. The question just asks, which asymptote type does it have? So we know it has a vertical. We can look at our answer choices and eliminate B and C and even E, because we know that there is at least a vertical asymptote. The second observation is we want to look at the powers on the variables, and we notice that it is larger in the numerator, so that's going to mean we're going to have an oblique or a slant asymptote because we can do long division in this case. So that makes it to be answer choice D. We have a vertical and an oblique asymptote in this function.